gravity is real and stocks just don't go straight up. The same way the semiconductors broke the 50-day moving average here, moved uh, to this rise in support here, the same way they did that as well. Well, is this, is this going to be a carbon copy of what happened in these two sequences? I say, yeah, you know, we'll see if they can come back. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Happy Monday and hope everybody had a good trading day. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I don't know if you can tell, I got crazy sunburn over this weekend. Red everywhere, but again, that's the price to pay, right? Price to pay for a little bit of happiness and sunshine. So let's talk about the market. Today was definitely a case of the haves and the have-nots. When you look at uh, the scoreboard today, you'll see a pretty big move uh, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They that water cooler cool caller cold. What the hell did I just say? Water cooler talk, right? Would call it. Um, the stock market, right? And so the Dow Jones Industrial Average move, uh, and it was a very, very good move, uh, led by uh, retail, led by energy. And it's not very hard for the Dow Jones to move up to 300 points. I think it's very, very easy. Again, it's only 30 stocks. And when you look at the moves in retail, you can see, you know, pretty aggressive. You know, you have Walmart, uh, you have Costco, right? You have Costco going incredibly strong. Uh, you have Target. I mean, look at Home Depot has been doing. So you have a really aggressive run and this represents the economy this represents uh, main street america but more important this is representing stimulus right spending and that was a good thing and that's kind of let's go with the other side of the equation if you guys remember and this was only what 24 hours ago uh if you guys remember from uh the weekend video we started talking about the semiconductors and the semiconductors uh that led us on a really big move uh, especially in the last fiscal uh, calendar year, just absolutely nuts. Uh, the LAM researches of the world and the AMDs and the videos of the world and all these companies that have anything to do uh, with microchips, with, with anything, right? Uh, they had a really, really big run. And if we notice what's been going on for the last month or so, when everything else was getting pulled up, right? The Amazons of the world, the Facebooks, the Apples of the world, the leaders that took us higher, if you remember from last night's video, we talked about they were retesting very, very big macro levels today. And we talked about this area here uh, last night on the weekend video, uh, this 241.50 level. And, you know, fourth time was the charm. Um, they confirmed the 241 level. And this is the first close below the 50-day moving average. Uh, making a move all the way down to the 239.40 level. Now, why is this a big deal? Um, if you trade any components of the NASDAQ 100, you're going to notice a couple of things. Number one, there's a tremendous representation of the semiconductors in the queues. That's number one. There's a lot of cross uh, listings on, on both of these ETFs. And what happens is when you have such a strong dominant area of the queues, spread out in the semiconductors, they're going to take everything down. So for example, Friday, Tesla had a really, really big reversal, right? And today could have been uh, day two, but it wasn't. Amazon had really great earnings and you know it rested, got denied off all-time highs, but it got hit as well. You had names that got upgraded today, for example, like a Google, okay, got upgraded today went lower. You had names, for example, they got upgraded today because they got sold off too heavily. First Solar, right? They got sold off as well. So you have a really big aggressive domino effect happening when the semiconductors are weak. And just because your stock has nothing to do with the semiconductors, if there is any type of tech exposure, it's going to be brought down. So if you look at the disconnect today with the Dow at one point up 350 points and you look at the Nasdaq composite that couldn't get out of its own way, you can really see that the market, again, does not like certainty. But the most important part is the market does respect technical analysis. And this is kind of where we are. And if you look at charts tonight, and you'll see a lot of really good looking charts tonight, they're not on the long side, guys, they're all on the short side. And if you go through the semiconductor, and this is why 
it's so much easier to focus on groups instead of focusing on individual stocks because your mind is not all over the place. You already identified the semiconductor from the weekend that these were a very, this is going to be a very, very important day. It held support one, two, three, four times. Today was the fifth time. It closed below the 50 day moving average. And again, if you look at what happens the first time stocks close below the 50 day moving average, well, look no, look no further right here. Here's the first close on the 50 and you had three days in a row going all the way back to this rising support. So again, if history repeats itself, and again, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, you have to love the probability of technical analysis, then we do have a potential move forward in the next couple of days all the way down to this 236 level. And again, you can see where it held right this little orange line. So a magnet to this area could be in the cards and it's very, very important. So when you're trading uh, for tomorrow, you know, don't look for bounces, right? Look for names that are about to confirm. And when you look at the names in that group, there's some names that, again, have a lot of support still. Like for example, MU is not clean, right? MQ has been below the 50 day moving average, but it's not clean. MU has to, has to lose this whole area here. AMD, as much as it's weak, right? It's not clean yet. It still has to lose this whole channel here. But when you start looking for clean channels, look at Avago, right? Look at Avago's channel. This thing is one day away from really getting aggressive. On uh, NVIDIA, which I caught today to the downside, you know, now it's not more than just a little bit of a trade, you know, two, three dollars. Now you're talking about the lows from 422 and the lows from the today are exactly the same lows, guys. So if this thing starts confirming this channel, look how much room you have to the downside. So stick to the themes. Right now, the semiconductors are very, very weak. Uh, a lot of tech stocks are getting sold on upgrades. Again, we saw that today. Uh, in Google, you saw that today uh, in First Solar, a bunch of other names as well. But the most important part is, and you have to really recognize for what this is, this is not a sell sentiment, right? We're still really, really high and really far away from the 324 level that we broke out. But this is still in the midst of profit taking. So my point is, there again, we're not talking about Armageddon. We're not talking about the end of the world. We're just talking about being prepared for the downside of the market, uh, taking some cash flow along the way, and making it a productive day instead of sitting there trying to buy dips of stocks that had major, major runs. Remember, the higher a stock or an ETF goes uh, away from its pivot, and the pivot on the Qs were 324, the higher probability you are going to get caught at some point in this channel here and start removing down. Now, if you look at the Qs, you pretty have a pretty defined line in the sand here. It's held now 334 once, twice and held this rising moving average today. So if this whole channel comes in, not only are the semiconductors going to continue to go lower, now you're talking about everything's going to come with it. So be prepared, folks. Trade both sides of the market. Be prepared. This is just, again, an area of the market that you don't have to be a victim. You don't need to sit there, watch your portfolio bleed. If you have, do, if you have exposure uh, to the semiconductors, again, just, just realize that technical analysis is real, gravity is real, and stocks just don't go straight up. The same way the semiconductors broke the 50-day moving average here, moved uh, to this rise in support here, the same way they did that as well. Well, is this, is this going to be a carbon copy of what happened in this two sequences? I say, yeah. You know, we'll see if they confirm today's action, but for the most part, they do look like there is going to be a day to uh, confirmation tomorrow, and we can get some pretty good cash flow vibes. Uh, and if you start looking at other names, especially the Nasdaq Composite, I mean, look, look at look at you know Beyond, right? Beyond traded down to this channel here, hit the 50-day moving average. If Beyond confirms tomorrow, I mean, look how much room uh, you have to the downside as well. Peloton, right? We talked about Peloton. A couple of days ago, I traded Peloton a couple of days ago, but now Peloton is starting to come into this macro channel. And if this macro channel starts getting hit, you know, again, there's a lot of downside as well. And you saw that today over and over and over again. And I think today was very structural. Um, it was one, one of those very, I, I wouldn't say there was an overabundance of value today, but this was a, a oh, excuse me, the other way around. I want to kind of switch it around. There, this wasn't a value day, the quote unquote value day, but there was a lot of value. Usually a value day is everything. Amazon, this, that, the other thing in beta. This was you had to kind of pick and choose, but the pivots were kind of seamless today and very, very effective, uh, no shakes. And the market kind of played out exactly how I thought uh, semis going, were going to lead uh, to the downside. The only pivot that didn't work was Facebook to the upside, just like everything else got sold. 
but you could see structural balance return. You could see orderly selling. And when you have a back testing market that is just profiting, that's all this is for at least for now until we start uh, testing major levels on the QQQs, you could still do very, very well. But you have to have a great game plan. You have to put in your work. It's, it's, it's a must uh, on the overnights. And the most important part is be conscious uh, to trade on both sides of the market just because the market you know, kind of swings on a dime. Uh, and if you're not prepared, you're going to be left uh, holding the bag. And that's not a derogatory uh, phrase. It's just being you know, unprepared and having your exposure open wide instead of being uh, protective of your capital. So going into tomorrow, you know, I am sell biased semiconductors. I am sell biased uh, a bunch of names uh, in the NASDAQ 100 that look like they're about to break down. But there is a flip side as well. Look at retail. Like Walmart is a monster. Look at this, you know, first close on Walmart uh, above the 50-day moving average. That's super bullish, right? Really, really bullish. Look at Target, right? Look at Target. Really broke out today looking really, really good. Look at Costco, right? The retail names look very, very strong. Look at, look at, look at the run on Costco, and this is the first close over supply. So there is a rotation into other areas. And if you do trade retailers and you do trade other names that a potential money flow could, they could go into, then again, you don't need to concentrate on the short side. Trade whatever you feel comfortable, right? Uh, not everybody has the same shoe size. Not everybody has the same uh, preference or likes and dislikes. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to feel comfortable trading different aspects of the market. But the most important part is it's your comfortability, not mine. If you trade retail, hey, this is it. You know, you have great charts. And if they start confirming to the upside tomorrow, you don't need to worry about semiconductors. You don't need to worry about uh, names in the NASDAQ composite. Stick to your lane and trade it accordingly. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Uh, it was pretty pretty good day. Um, pretty good day. You had a lot of stuff going on. You had a lot of names that didn't confirm either. Um, I was watching Coinbase. Um, this this channel here. If this thing eventually, I mean, this thing has been a complete dud uh, since its debut. Uh, and if you look at the channel here, I really like the setup. The problem is it's failed so many times here. You can see here this whole channel keeps on dying. In this whole channel. If this thing ever starts confirming that 307, 308 area, I have to assume, unless Coin, Coinbase goes to zero, I have to assume it's finally going to break its downtrend. But uh, unfortunately, today was not the day for it. Uh, Netflix, we'll talk about that in a second. There was a definitive pivot that I finally found uh, that I traded from 16 to 19. It was a pretty good trade. Uh, Tesla never, you know, obviously never got to the 17, 18 level. Uh, pool, again, pool is one of those scenarios that looks really good, but it's not tradable. This is more of a macro trade for all you guys who are trading long-term. Pool trades, like I said, super thin. Uh, potential for option traders. Um, 427 needs to build. Really nice looking chart. Again, I don't have any. It's just way too thin for me. Uh, but this is, again, the first close over 520, 427. Uh, went to like almost 432. It looks good. It looks really, really good. Again, uh, the pool market, um, the pool market, especially in the Northeast because of COVID, has been booming. Like It's absolutely booming and their business uh, is definitely reflecting that. Um, RD, I forgot to watch RDFN. What the hell did it do today? RDFN 73. Well, never got there anyway. Uh, I wasn't even watching that as well. Uh, FedEx, great pivot on, on, on FedEx. Good job by Daryl. Good job by Will putting into the channel. Uh, 296 and a half, 297 needs to build. And again, look at FedEx. FedEx has nothing to do with technology. Look at this beautiful move here. 296 and a half, 50. This thing went to, this is a $10 move. On, on FedEx, right? FedEx. So again, guys, there's plenty of areas in the market that you don't need to concentrate uh, to the short side to be uh, very, very whole. Uh, Facebook obviously never got to the 330 level. There was another pivot at 28, only went up a couple of bucks. And here's where you started getting with some value to the downside. FSLY, 6280, if it builds below, it can flush. Here was FSLY. Here's a 6280. Uh, went down to like 6085. Nice move there. Uh, TDOC, and by the way, Thank you very much. And this is where I love the internet. In real life, if a, 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 an adult man would sit, tell him in front of you and say some derogatory word, right? There'd be some repercussions. In the internet, you could say whatever you want. So I tweeted this out, 167 needs to build. Some guy on stock tweets of all places goes, F you, man, I hope you die. Well, he didn't say I hope you die, but F you. Yeah, like I told you to buy TDOC at the wrong price. Anyway, 167, the internet's a, a, a marvelous place. Uh, 167, if it builds below, can flush, trades a little bit thinner. Here was TDOC, right? Here's TDOC, took out this whole channel here, 67, 
uh, traded down to 62. It looks lower. Sorry about, sorry about it, buddy. I know, I know your two shares will be safe. Uh, but TDOC is looking lower. Uh, I still like this thing. It's a little bit thin. Uh, here is NVIDIA. I caught a nice move on NVIDIA today. I, I like it now more macro. 600 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Here is NVIDIA. Took out the 600, right? Took out the 600, traded right to this bottom channel in the 591 level. I'm telling you guys, this thing loses the 591 level tomorrow. It's a lot of room down. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, Facebook, yeah, Facebook just didn't wake up. Uh, it only, you know, it took out the 328, rallied like 50 cents, and then completely died like everything else. Um, so yeah, you could see technology was just bad here. So I bought Netflix 516. I sold it all the way up. Uh, it traded to the 519 area, and then obviously it reversed course. So nice move on Netflix. Take on the way down. Next support 597. It went all the way down to 591. FSLY, take on the way down. Uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom I still like. Uh, 313, if it cracks, it can flush, it can blow down. Uh, it took out the 313, traded down to 311. I still like it lower uh, for tomorrow. Uh, pool 531 on deck, and that's it. So I, I personally think the value tomorrow uh, is in the semiconductors if they do have another leg lower. Uh, stay patient, everybody. Again, you don't need to trade every day. You don't need to trade every week. The most important part is realize where your strengths are, where your weakness are. Omit your weakness. It's not a pissing contest. It's not an ego contest. You work very, very hard for your money and make sure you're comfortable when you are allocating. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.